Hi, I'm Tiffany and I have lost over 200 pounds naturally, no surgery, no pills, nothing like that. And that was over 10 years ago. And today I'm going to tell you my personal story. Now, it's always cool to look at influencers and see their tips or their tricks or their exercise moves, but being able to hear where someone has come from and what their history is, I find it to be so meaningful. And so today I'm going to share that with you. Now, I'm only 36 years old and I was overweight for a very good portion of my life, so my story is a little long. So this is going to be part one of a three-part series. So I hope that if you enjoy this, that you will click on that subscribe button and you will join us back for part two and three. So for me, I really can't ever remember a time in my childhood where I wasn't overweight. Um, all of my kind of memories through elementary school, middle school, high school, I was always the biggest girl pretty much in my class that I knew. And like probably many people, I have a lot of memories of kids, you know, saying things, whether it was about my legs or my weight or whatever. And those things get just burned in your subconscious. But I really just kind of accepted that that was always going to be who I was because I never really knew anything different. And I had a really supportive family. They definitely were not amazing at teaching me nutritional knowledge, um, but they never made me feel uh, bad or ashamed about my weight. And so honestly, I didn't even really realize that it was that big of a problem, you know, in elementary school, other than the fact that kids would make fun of me. But as I started to get into, you know, high school, I became more aware of that my weight really was an issue because all of a sudden I couldn't shop at any of the same stores that any of my friends were shopping at. And uh, as I got into my 20s, I started to really see it was playing a drastic effect. Like I couldn't get on an airplane without having to use a seatbelt extender or I couldn't ride on roller coaster rides that my friends were riding on because I didn't know if the lap bar was going to fit all the way. As you get into your early 20s, you know, you start to think about the future and uh, I was starting to see how my weight was really going to be impacting my future. Specifically, my job um, was you know, going to require me to be doing a lot of physical things, a lot of traveling. And I started to see how the fact that you know, I was like begging and praying that no one would have to be in the seat next to me on an airplane, not just because it's a little uncomfortable for anyone, but because I was thinking, I'm going to be so squished. I'm going to be spilling over into their seat. They're not going to want to sit by me. And I wasn't able to you know, um, get around qu quickly with the other people who were on my team, I couldn't walk up hills, you know, without being super wind. Every time someone would invite me to go out to eat, I specifically remember um, going to an Olive Garden and kind of noticing that the chairs at the Olive Garden had arms on them and just thinking, oh man, like they're going to squeeze me. Like my thighs are going to be squeezed in these things and just praying that anytime I sat down in a chair that it wouldn't break because there were moments where I would sit down in metal chairs and they would be a little wobbly. And I just remember thinking like, man, this shouldn't be so at age 23. And as I started to look forward into the future of what would my life one day look like with kids? First of all, am I ever going to have kids if I'm this unhealthy? And if I do, what sort of you know role model am I going to be for them? And am I going to have to constantly be making excuses of why I can't do various things like ride on roller coasters with them or chase them or coach their sports or something like that because of my weight? Am I going to be hiding from pictures because I'm embarrassed of what I look like? And I didn't want that. Now, I wish I could say that those were the reasons that I actually started my weight loss journey, but they really weren't. It was just that moment where a friend asked me, hey, my friends um, and family are going to do this like Thanksgiving weight loss challenge and we're all going to put in $20 and whoever, you know, wins the most amount of weight by percentage at the end of this, you know, two or three month period, they're going to take away the cash. And at the time I was super poor and I was like, yeah, I'll kick all your skinny little butts, right? I thought <laughs> I've got tons of weight to lose, so why not? But I remember stepping on the scale. I needed to know the number because we had to send in, you know, what was our beginning number of this weight loss challenge? And it was 352 pounds. And I remember just thinking, I mean, I guess that's a lot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was just who I was. My weight was just always creeping up. You know, I was wearing a size 26, 28 jean, and even that was beginning to get tight. But I said yes to this challenge. And in my mind, I think I really just thought I'm going to do it for these, you know, 12 weeks or whatever it was, and I'm going to win and that's going to be it. But as I started actually you know, doing the challenge, which included for me at first just saying, okay, let's get a picture of like, what the heck am I eating? And I just was trying to eat foods that I thought was healthy, but I had no idea what was. And let me just go on a few walks. First of all, it really became apparent to me how out of shape I was. I remember 
the first time I tried to do the elliptical machine for five minutes, it, it wasn't possible. And I was 23 years old. And uh, it was a wake up call because I think sometimes we have in our mind like, oh yeah, I could run a mile if I really had to. And then you try and you get 30 seconds in and you're like, I'm going to have a heart attack. And that was me. I had just never really tried to diet before and I didn't really know anything about diet or nutrition. Honestly, when I look back at my childhood and my early, you know, growing up, the reason why I was overweight, uh, part of it was I just didn't have any nutritional knowledge. Like, yes, I knew that, you know, chips were a worse choice nutritionally than an apple, but I had no idea that when I would go to, you know, out to a restaurant at Chili's that me having, you know, three Cokes and some chips and salsa and some chicken fingers and fries, you know, was easily putting probably a $3,000 calorie price, you know, uh, on that. I had no idea. I didn't know that when I was getting my Starbucks Frappuccinos in the morning, that those were like six to 700 calories. And I was treating that as a drink. So definitely part of where that weight came from was just a lack of nutritional understanding. Um, but the other part of it for me was I had a really uh, rocky relationship with my family. So I didn't have a great relationship with my parents growing up. They were kind of in and out of my life. Uh, and there was just, my life was very tumultuous. I never really knew what to expect from day to day. And so food for me as a child really was kind of like the only thing in my life that I could control. And that I could kind of look to and say like, this is going to be stable for me. So even if, you know, the day was crazy and my family was going nuts and, you know, I was feeling all of these hard emotions, I knew that a number four at McDonald's was going to taste really good, right? Or I knew that my favorite waffles with, you know, tons of syrup and butter and whipped cream, I knew that was going to taste good. And food just became this source of comfort for me and this source of like familiarity and stability for me, um, particularly eating out. Like if I could go and eat out, that's what my family kind of did for fun. If I could eat out, that was like, oh, okay, things are good. That was like our way and my way of like pampering myself. And so in college, even though I had like zero money, um, you know, if things were going bad and crazy, I would still find a way to go out and, you know, get that value meal from Wendy's or get that Starbucks because that was the way to make myself feel like things are okay. Things are going to be okay. And if you know anything about eating out a lot, eating out brings with it a lot, a lot, a lot of calories. And so I was ingesting thousands of calories at every meal because I didn't have the nutritional knowledge. But then also I was using this food as a, a crutch or a, a means of self-medicating all of the, the feelings and the tumultuousness that was going on in my life. Um, and so that's where I found myself at the beginning of my weight loss journey with no fitness experience. I had never run a mile. I had never, I was the kid who in elementary school when the gym coaches would say, it's time for us to run the one mile, you know, turkey trot or whatever in gym class, I would raise my hand and say, who else would like to walk with me? You know, I, they hated me because of that. Um, and so I had no fitness experience. I had no nutritional knowledge. I had never lost weight before. And yet here I am 13 years later, after having lost over 200 pounds, still living a healthy lifestyle. So that is the first part of my story of weight loss and how I lost over 200 pounds. Um, and I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and come back to uh, learn the rest of my story. And um, specifically, if you feel like you're looking for help in how to get started on your journey, I encourage you to check out my website where I have a course that I've written where I have literally shared absolutely everything that I learned and put into place on my journey that helped me lose over 200 pounds. Thanks for being here and I'll come back soon.